Now, obviously, the big news from the weekend was the Bennelong by-election result. It turned out to be a comfortable win for oh, the, the previous uh, Liberal member, uh, John Alexander, who will remember we, uh, the people of Bennelong were forced to this uh, by-election because it was discovered he had uh, dual citizenship on the, the account of his uh, father. Uh, it was uh, obviously... Uh, Build as a high stakes uh, campaign for the, uh, the the government, and Labor had their star candidate uh, Christina Keneally, former New South Wales Premier. But you know, dis despite all the you know the hype and the media attention, it was a comfortable win for John Alexander. In the, in the end, uh, he won with uh, fifty four point seven five of the two party preferred vote, which only represented a a swing of uh, four point nine seven percent to Labor. Uh, so it was a pretty comfortable uh, win, and uh, yeah, you have. To, and if you watched uh, the the coverage uh, on Saturday night, you noticed Malcolm Turnbull was, you know, he was holding up John Alexander's arm. He was very, uh, he was very eager to claim this victory uh, as his own. Well, I think he, the reason he wants to do that is because he knows that uh, he's safe at least for now. Yes. Um John Alexander was a, uh, a superstar candidate for the area. It was really a seat that the Liberals had to win. It's not a seat that I would call ultra safe, but reasonably safe. So um, even with a swing against them, which ended up being a 4.59% swing, which when it comes to by elections is actually not, not a, a, a big swing. It's actually re relatively small because um, doing a little bit of statistic searching, I found that the the average swing usually at a by election is around six percent, and we've seen by elections go twenty percent and, and even more um, in some by elections. And considering the the unpopularity uh, of Turnbull, he actually did very well to to claim this seat. Now, uh, it's 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 an area where really um, the Liberals just had to make an impact. I mean, Labor pulled out um, what, what they could in, in, in putting a high-profile candidate in there. But uh, with Christina Keneally, it's, it's a candidate that has a lot of baggage. So it's someone that is well-known uh, for the wrong reasons. And it doesn't seem like it was something that um, it could have been a good idea on their behalf and um, may have worked against them uh, where they could have gotten a better result. Uh, Christina Keneally in the final days of the campaign when uh, journalists were starting to really hammer her about uh, you know her connections to you know Eddie Obeid, Ian McDonald and Joe Proti, she got quite testy in those uh, interviews obviously it was you know uh, very uncomfortable and then there was also the Liberals they uh, managed to purchase the uh, web domain uh, ChristinaKeneally.com which they turned into an attack website listing uh, all of their failures and connections to these uh, crimes politicians uh, online well politicians don't like uh, having the truth exposed when it's against them so um, it's, it's 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 quite funny how they act when it uh, when all of a sudden things come out against them and then they claim all, all sorts of things um, but the, the Liberals were really just putting out facts straight hard facts uh, reminding voters on her past which um, is a shady past and obviously she had connections with those uh, gentlemen that you mentioned, um, being in New South Wales Parliament, and uh, at the time of her premiership, um, obviously um, didn't do anything to, um, to seize their influence, which they had a big influence over the Parliament in the, in the dealings that, they, uh, that occurred under them. So I, I think that it's, it's, it's really rich for her to... Um, to, to claim such uh, bias and um, to, to go off and and, and and whinge about these things because both parties do it, all parties, but it's just dirty. Um, well, you could call it dirty tactics, but at the end of the day, the Liberals didn't really attack her in a bad way. They just stated pure hard facts, um, which really she couldn't argue against. It's just her history. So it's not really something that uh, she could say is wrong. And um, they didn't get nasty when it came to personal uh, attributes um, of hers. It was just basically her record that, um, that she didn't want to uh, have brought up. Well, speaking of uh, dirty tactics, there was also Labor's 
uh, campaign in the in the final week uh, seemed to be this accusation that the Turnbull government was uh, China phobic, uh, which is it was pointed out to me is not actually a correct term. It's called xenophobia, uh, so they couldn't even <laughs> get that right. But yeah, basically saying because of uh, the Turnbull government's attacks on uh, Sam Dastyari over his Chinese connections and the new uh, foreign uh, influence and donation laws that apparently uh, the Turnbull government was saying to... And they didn't just... They, they started off by just talking about Chi uh, Chinese Australians, but uh, Christina Keneally even said that, oh, Turnbull's making Asian Australians feel like uh, second-class citizens. And, like, basically, you know... Tr you know, all but saying that, you know, you sh uh, because the reason they went for this line of attack is because Benelong does have a high percentage of uh, Chinese and uh, Asian voters. And so they, they, they clearly thought that, you know, the, uh, this was uh, an effective uh, line of attack. But, you know, in the end, uh, playing the race card, uh, which, you know, how often does the left do that? Uh, it it didn't, didn't have an impact in the end. Yeah, Labor, as you said, the left in general play these um, these games with minority voters. They basically use them um, as seen fit, and, and they normally tend to get away with it in a lot of ways, but um, the Chinese are a lot smarter than that and don't, um, don't let uh, the Labor Party or the Greens um, use them for their votes. And this, this is the thing. I mean, to claim that the Liberal Party and Malcolm Turnbull are, are China-phobic or, or xenophobic are... I think um, if you were to have any criticisms, you, you could actually say the opposite and um, you could actually criticise that they're, they're actually very China-friendly um, if you were to take a, a more nationalistic approach um, to how you view the situation. I mean, um, they set up the, the free trade agreement with China. Um, they're very pro-business. I mean, the, the Chinese people um, in general, I would say, are, are very uh, highly or look highly uh, favourable to the Liberal Party. Um, rather than the Labor Labor Party, they're they're very business orientated people, um, very very liberal in their views, and I, I think um, I mean it's just a tactic that they always try and pull, but um, I think there would be um, more Labor supporters that would be um, having uh, negative views towards Chinese than there would be Liberal supporters for sure. And uh, Malcolm Turnbull, as you mentioned, is definitely safe as leader. I don't see anything happening um, till the next election, to be honest, unless something um, just popped out of nowhere, uh, a scandal of such. But, I mean, he's he's been able to win the, the Benelong by-election. He's also um, got Barnaby Joyce back into power. Um, so, I mean, two by-election wins, and considering how unpopular he is, I mean... He's really done a good job in, in being... I mean, he is lucky that the, the two seats that did fall were ones that he could easily win. But in saying that, there has been big swings in the past that could have um, really damaged him and his leadership. But I think he's feeling good right now. And I think the Liberal Party in general um, can only look ahead and, and, and say, well, we've we, we done a good job at the campaign and um, the, the tactics the Labor Party used just didn't work. And at this by-election in Benelong, it was also the first test for uh, Australian Conservatives. Uh, uh, they had a reasonably high-profile candidate in uh, Joram Riker, whose brother runs the, the very popular uh, Facebook and YouTube channel, uh, Verum uh, Media. Now, uh, obviously, uh, Benelong was uh, one of the 17 electorates that voted no on same-sex marriage, so people were wondering, could uh, Australian Conservatives, you know, really capture a large segment of the conservative vote but in the end they they didn't do very well they only got uh 4.3 percent of the the primary vote and most of that uh came at the expense of the christian democrats uh, fred niles party uh which uh uh, they suffered a 3.3% uh, swing against them to have a primary vote of 3.1%. And most of the uh, reduction in the Liberal primary vote, all of that went to the increase in Labor's primary vote. So there actually wasn't that much of a change in the uh, cons uh, so, oh, conservative or, or would you call it socially conservative vote overall in Benelong. 
I think it was a very disappointing result for them. I, um, I mean, I, I've been on the forums, I've been on social media, and um, like always, you will see people that support the party, um, the Australian Conservatives, basically uh, highlighting positives and saying how well they did and everything. But if you really want to look at uh, things unbiasedly and, um, and do things right then whether you support the party or not, you have to really just look at, at facts and, and, and see it for what it is. I mean, I was expecting them to do very well this, this um, by-election. And the reason for that is because when you look at the demographics of this, this seat of Benelong, it really has their name all over it. It, it, it is one of the seats high, in Australia, in the country, I would say that Benelong would be one of the seats that would favour them most. It's uh, very uh, socially conservative with your Chinese voters, um, uh, Korean voters. Um, I mean, these, these are voters that are um, against gay marriage, against safe schools, um, in turn, very economically liberal. Uh, it basically suited them to a T, but for them to just scrape um, past the 4% mark, um, which is where they are able to get their, their funding back, off, obviously, for the 4%, and... Um, unfortunately for the Christian Democrats, they just missed out now because of the, the swing against them with the, with the Australian Conservatives. So um, they, they definitely will be uh, displeased at that. But like you said, yeah, I mean, most of the, the votes the Australian Conservatives got were from uh, the Christian Democrats and maybe a little slice from the Liberals. But it really wasn't a, um, a defining vote where they can say, we uh, were able to find a, uh, um, a a big demographic that voted for us. It was just um, one minor party that um, basically lost a little bit out to another minor party. It didn't really um, help at all. And even when you put the Australian Conservatives and Christian Democrats together, you only end up with 7% or so, which is basically what the Greens got. And, and for the Greens to get such a vote and in such a seat as Benelong, um, is really confusing to me. I, I think it's, um, it is disappointing and where they go from here, they, they really need to, um, to look at this and, and see what they can do to increase their vote because if they're to make an impact, they're going to have to pull double figures. They can't rely on, on such small numbers to, to only scrape past to, um, the 4% mark in getting funding. They need to really make an impact and pull huge figures to, uh, get their names out there if they're, to influence the, the political spectrum. Uh, and it's also the, the poor result of uh, Australian Conservatives that it's also made me ponder the question for Conservatives, is it just better to try and change the, the major parties? Because that is who the, the voters, you know, even though there's all this talk of, you know, minor parties, the, the voters are still voting for the major parties. So should should that be the, the way forward for Conservatives to, you know, implement um, our preferred policies? I've heard this argument um, a lot, actually, lately. There's been many people that are very conservative that uh, had stints with minor parties and they're actually thinking of going back to the Liberal Party in trying to uh, change it from within. But I, I think that just looking at how much influence and power the left have in the major parties, it seems very, very hard or unlikely to be able to change it. it it's just there has been some major changes taking place, as you've witnessed in Victoria, with the Liberal Party starting to, to build up the, the right and, and shift to the right. But in New South Wales especially, they're really, really controlled by the left in such a way that every pre-selection, a left-wing candidate gets pre-selected. The, the amount of right-wing candidates in the Liberals is very minimal. It's um, For something to happen, it would, it would be very, very unlikely. It's just... Um, it's just too hard at this point. There would have to be some sort of major revolution of some sort within the party for this to, to take place. I mean, Tony Abbott is even, um, many have told me that uh, he may get challenged for his seat of Warringah and there might be some sort of uh, push to have him removed. So there, there really is um, a few people in the, in the Liberal Party, the moderate faction, the Turnbull faction, that uh, have been pushing and have been in control for a number of years now and they're really uh, 
bloodthirsty. They're really after the, the, the right, and they've been shrinking the right uh, successfully for, for many years now. So um, it, it will be very hard to, to change within, and that's why a lot of people are turning to the miners. When it comes to the minor parties, of course, the problem is with the right is there's too many of them. So even though Family First has merged with Australian Conservatives, I think you're going to have to have more mergers take place uh, for a minor party to be able to really uh, be considered as a fourth major player in the political system because you've still got One Nation, the Shooters Party, you've got um, different, you know, ALA. There's, uh, there's so many different parties. You can name at least half a dozen with such a reputable name that could... Um, that, that could easily get a couple percentage points. So in saying that, they really need to start thinking, well, maybe we should start working together and that way we could be an alternative because these parties really do have similar views. There's not much difference in between them. So th this is, this may be what needs to take place rather than changing it within because the, the major parties at the moment, they're just too under control um, by a certain elite of people, unfortunately. So it's very, very difficult to do that. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.